Hello guys, this is Ron from High Tech Legion and this is part of our review of the MSI GeForce GTX 760 video card. This is actually their uh, twin Frozer gaming uh, video card for the GTX 760 and I'm going to show you how to overclock this card using of course uh, the MSI Afterburner and MSI also has a new app called the MSI Gaming app and essentially it is a quick overclock and a preset overclock tool that is available with the driver CD or available for download via MSI's website and let me just uh, run Unigine actually let me, before I run Unigine Heaven let me just minimize that and what I have here is GPU Z and you can see the default clocks here and I'm gonna demonstrate the MSI gaming app you have three presets here you have OC mode you have gaming mode and silent mode of course without anything clicked here it is just running at the default um, Default mode, you can see the GPU clock and full clock matches, even the memory clock and the boost clock. And if you go to the sensor, you'll see the error values there, the temperature, uh, the GPU core clock, it is clocking down so it saves power even with the VDCC uh, at 0 0.750 volt. And uh, once you click OC mode, you'll notice a difference there. The screen will blank out. And uh, give it a few seconds before it actually uh, while it overclocks your card and determines what is available and will recover after a while depending on your system it might take a bit and uh, once you have it back there you go and see our uh, afterburner popped up here and shows you that it added plus 65 to the core clock it didn't change the memory uh, the memory uh, adjustments here but it also it also didn't change the power limit and you can see now here on GPU Z I'm just minimize afterburner there you can see in GPU Z that uh, the VDCC is now at 1.2 volt. It's running at maximum. It's OC mode essentially is. Uh, if you put the tooltip there, it shows you what actually doesn't pop up, but it tells you that the OC mode is, of course, to uh, for automatically overclocking it to the maximum it can. That is determined by the software. Essentially, similar to the OC Genie that you find on MSI motherboards. You can see that the click here at the first tab you can see that the GPU clock default at 1085 is now 1020 the default clock and the boost clock is uh, 1150 uh, the default clock is 1085 and the boost clock has been to set to 1150 so that's uh, it's quite significant for a quick auto overclock also another preset here gaming mode click that shows you pops up the MSI afterburner again so I just had it minimized and that essentially is the regular uh, there's no adjustments here for the graphics clock. You can see that it's still 1020 10, and uh, 1085 boost. So it is a default boost, but the difference is that the uh, VDCC is locked at 1.2 volt, so that the power uh, is continuous in there. And uh, also, it's running at 3D mode even though you're in the desktop. It's not power clocking down. But if you want to save uh, even power lower than the default, you click on silent mode here. Of course your screen will go blank again and uh, it, it doesn't take as long as the OC mode because it doesn't have to determine uh, the maximum overclock that you can get but uh, you see here that our VDCC is back down again to 0 0.750 volt uh, lowest it can get of course to power down since we are in 2D mode and desktop and you can see that the uh, the core clock also has down clock down to 135 megahertz while we're not running any 3D programs. Obviously, when you run a uh, Unity in Heaven or any stressful 3D program on there, you'll notice that it will overclock, or rather, it will run at the core clock it is set to. And MSI Afterburner popped up again. You can notice that it down clocked it to minus 39 megahertz core clock. It didn't adjust the memory, just the core clock. So if you click here in the graphics card, you'll notice that the GPU clock has been lowered down to 981 megahertz and at 1046 boost uh, to give you more power saving. This is, of course, for users who want to run it in a, a quieter system, although the fan itself already is very quiet. And what I'm going to do now is show you how to overclock next. And uh, let me just pull up the software. And let me just close MSI Gaming app here. And reset to default. Notice that everything is back to normal. And uh, there you go, settling down. And now I am ready to, of course, uh, start uh, my overclock.
All right, so now this is the part where I show you how to overclock using the MSI Afterburner overclocking utility. Now, as you can see, I have Heaven Benchmark running in the back, and I can just hit F9 there. So it's our, uh, actually benchmarking, we can get results. And I have also MSI Afterburner and GPU-Z to verify the values. You can see that it is a default, uh, set to default right now, whatever set in the BIOS. You have 1020 megahertz GPU clock and 1085 megahertz boost. It's already factory overclocked, but we're going to push it further using the MSI Afterburner utility. Now, you can see here, I have the hardware monitor window. I already did some overclocking here. And you can see that it did not reach the, didn't even reach 70 degrees with the maximum temperature when overclocked. And you can you want to do of course some adjustments here. When it comes to uh, Kepler video cards, you have GPU boost uh, to contend with. They're not the same as the older Fermi and even older generation video cards where you do a direct adjustments. In here, you do offsets. So for the most part, you can do uh, here. For example, I would I would suggest setting it to plus 50 megahertz increments. Uh, at a time until it becomes unstable. Of course, when it is unstable, either you will see corruption in the uh, graphics, especially when you, and artifacts, especially when you're overclocking the memory, and also your driver will crash and recover or it will freeze completely. Uh, but other than that, of course, we start again and try it and uh, lower the increments from 50 megahertz, lower it down to plus 25 megahertz, and then get, uh, just keep on refining it until you get the maximum core clock that you get. I suggest overclocking the core clock and the memory clock separately if you want to overclock them uh, both. I, I got the maximum I got was 107 megahertz here for the core clock. In this particular card, I cannot guarantee that you will get the same since each core is different and each sort of silicone gets a different uh, result. And uh, you can see here that the GPU-Z sensor already detected a different, it already detected the offset. You can see that the offset here is 1127 for the GPU clock and 1192 for the boost. Now that's different than the effective core clock that you see here at MS After Burners, that's 1254. And if you go to the sensor here, you see it's also 1254, higher than the boost clock set here in the uh, GPU-Z. Now that is because of the GPU Boost 2.0 where, where it actually overclocks further than the offset that you set it at because of the available TDP and the, the power available. You can, um, you can see here you can adjust the power limit all the way to 145 but I found that it was not necessary at all because uh, only re 72 degrees, sometimes it would spike, so you might want to increase it to 100 or something around that. But other than that, it's uh, it's not necessary for adjusting this because the temperature uh, is well below the throttling temperature for GPU boost, hence it can boost further from 1192 to 1254 with the core clock. And of course, uh, our benchmark is still very stable there in the back. And uh, at the fan speed is very quiet. 41% was the maximum fan speed I've ever achieved. It's running at 1200 megahertz. And I'm going to shut up quickly here for a bit just so you can hear just how quiet this fan is. Now that is not very far from the idle fan. In fact, I can't hear it when it's inside the case. I actually opened the case here just to kind of exaggerate the sound. Uh, now MSI has moved on to a larger fan compared to the previous generation 660 tie with the 80 millimeter fans. And these are 90 or 92 millimeter fans. They're actually a bit closer to the, uh, yeah, they're about, about that. And they're quite big compared to their last generation 660 tie. Hence, the acoustic performance is much superior. Now, see here, very stable. You can overclock the memory uh, further. These are Hynix memory chips, so they, they do overclock very well. But my concern is that there are some memory chips located at the back of the PCB which do not have any heat sinks. So they can run hot, so I just suggest either putting in an aftermarket heat sink on that part or a back plate. But there are, the memory chips on front of the PCB do have the 4-in-1 heat sink, similar to GTX 770 and GTX 780 gaming series from MSI. So. Those are not, uh, there's not a problem in terms of cooling. But other than that, you see our engine benchmark finished without any issues. And that's pretty much it. It's pretty good overclock already. 1254 and you can, uh, if you want to read the rest of the review, just click on the link below at www.hitechlegion.com. Also leave us questions or comments at Facebook, facebook.com slash hlreviews. Click subscribe on this video so you can, uh, you can see our daily updates also. And uh, that's 
pretty much it. If you haven't seen it here, you haven't seen it anywhere else, we have over a thousand videos now, so that's most likely true. And uh, once again, this is Ron, signing out.